Hello, welcome to Creative Nerds. We just got a tutorial today to show you how to create these slick iPod icons using Illustrator. A great tutorial for a beginner and some useful tips and tricks for some people who may be a little bit more experienced in Illustrator. So let's jump straight into it. Okay, then, so we want to select a new web document. We want the width to be 800 pixels and the height to be 600 pixels and then select the OK button. Okay then, so you want to head over to the shape tools. The tool we want to use is the rounded rectangle tool. We want to draw a nice long rectangle for the screen. We can press up and down the cursor keys which will make a more curved rectangle. So you can just keep press it up and down the cursor keys until we find the perfect curved corners. I think that will do. Increase it a bit. Yeah, I think that's perfect. So this is going to be the overall the base of the iPod. So we want to get rid of the stroke. Cancel that, sorry. So we want to get rid of the stroke and add a gradient. So you want a gradient to start off with black at the end, also black at the start. Then in the middle, we want to add a slightly lighter tone, not white but a light grey into the middle. So just drag that swatch into the middle of the gradients. There we go, and we'll see that colour running through the start of the through the middle of the iPod. So next, you want to move on to creating the screen. So we can just select the shape we just created. Control C to copy it, and Control V to paste it. And we just want to change around the dimensions of the square we just created, rectangle. Move it higher to the top. Be higher to the top. That's near enough, perfect. So once again, we want to add a gradient. We want to start off. We want to add a gradient. So. We want the end, the last color to be a black, and then the start color to be just a lighter tone of black. So just grab the swatch K90, replace it with the white. There you go. And then we want to add an angle of 90 to the square. Press enter. We want to align the shape so everything's aligned into the center. Then we want to copy the same square. Control C, paste Control V. And then we want to drag the bottom anchor point once we select it. Hold on to shift and make it slightly smaller. Than the square we just created before. And lining the center, just using the cursor keys quickly. Move it down. Yeah, that's, that's about perfect. All we want to do this time is just take the angle off. We don't want to add a new gradient. We just want to take the angle off the current square. So press angle zero. And then we want to press Control C. The two squares we just created. And then we want to select this icon, new color group. Uh, what do you want to call it? We don't want to call it a particular name, so just leave it as a default name and select the OK button. 
this will then add the two colors we use into our swatches palette so we can quickly use it at an ease if we need to so we grab the ellipse tool hold on to shift draw a circle hold on to shift will help us to draw a perfect round circle and then we're going to center it so it's bang on in the middle from the top to the bottom and like last time we added an angle of 90 so we do it again the circle 90 and then we can press control C then control V to paste circle hold on to shift to make it slightly smaller Yeah, and then position it so it's nicely positioned, positioned into the middle. I'm going to take off the angle to zero on the new circle we just created. Perfect. Then we want to draw one last circle. But this time we want to make the colour of the circle white or white and then press control onto the circle behind it and then you want to bring up the windows path find the tool and then subtract shape from area And it's made a nice little slick button in the middle, if you can see it. The next part of the tutorial is to create the buttons for the iPod interface. So you want to select Type Tool and write the text menu. The font we're using is Myri Pro, but I'm sure Arial or any other font would work well with it. So we want to change the font color to white grab the die grab the selection tool and center it into the middle of the button menu then you want to zoom in view zoom in so we then want to go over to the shape tools and select the star tool we want to draw out the star and then press down on the cursor keys until we're left with just one triangle. We want to draw out the triangle and then we want to go to the corner anchor point and rotate it around whilst holding shift to keep it straight. And then we want to drag it onto top of the iPod, press Ctrl C to copy it and Ctrl V to paste another triangle. Then we wanna move the triangle so it's directly on top of it and then move with the left arrow cursor key or you can drag it out so the triangle on top is about two three pixels away from the one on the bottom. And then we want to select the shape tool again, and the shape we want to select this time is a rectangle. We're going to draw a nice long rectangle, and then press Control Shift on each shape, and then Object Group. And then we want to sh shrink it down so it's not so big shrink it down so it's pretty small pretty small so it's the same size as menu text just about I 
thing that's near enough perfect yeah then I'm going to press control C to copy control B to paste and then we want to go over to object transform reflect select preview and we want to select axis vertical and select the OK button and move this down so it's in line with the fast forward button so now we've created the fast forward button and the rewind button now all what's left to do is to create the pause button so next we want to create the play button so head over to the star tool once again and then we want to draw a triangle just like we did for the fast forward button Rota rotate it around like last time whilst holding on to shift and the for play button because it's a triangle and usually it's a rectangle Control C, Control V, another rectangle in front of that. It's usually about a pixel or so apart. So then, when I set every shape we just created, object group. Don't know why it didn't group. Let's group it again. Shift Object Group. Yeah, that time it's grouped. We want to resize it so it's a lot smaller than the current size. Then we want to pull it middle of I put at the middle of the bottom of the iPod interface. There we go. We've created iPod button. Grab the triangle just to slightly just move it apart if some of the shapes are too close to each other, just to give it more of like a realistic effect. So it looks actually like an iPod button and it's not so close. You want to zoom out okay. And so, next, you want to copy this square. Control C, Control V to paste it. You want to position it directly back on top. Then when I head over to the ellipse tool, draw a circle, covers the screen like we just created that little square. Position it so it's about halfway off. Then when it's in the right position, you want to select both layers and you want to go to Window Pathfinder. And the one that we want to select, Shape Mode, you want to select here is Subtract from Shape Area. So we select that, turn it black, and we want to decrease the opacity. About 5% will do nothing. About slightly lower. 15 to 10, I would say. Look pretty good. So position it so it's directly on top, so it's pixel perfect. When you're happy with it, there you go, Bob's your uncle. Then, if you wanted to, you could add an eye. Uh, iPod Apple symbol into the middle of it. There's tons of vectors you can just type to Google a free Apple vector logo and that will come up. You can import it to Illustrator and put it directly in the middle of the screen, which would look pretty cool and give that more of a iPod effect and make it look more, more realistic. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.
and feel free to leave your thoughts about it in the short comment below, that would be great. Thanks.